Netanyahu's speech, so the rhetoric was stronger, uh, which is nice, great. Yeah, the attacks, the attacks were worse than previous attacks, and the rhetoric was stronger than previous rhetoric. The rhetoric still did not include Hamas will no longer exist after this attack, which tells me that Israel's response will be much like America's response to 9-11, which is far insufficient, half-assed response, Hamas will, uh, will be damaged militarily, and it'll take them some time to recover, but it won't be what needs to be done, which is the complete destruction of Hamas, the complete occupation of Gaza, and I would add some action against Hezbollah preemptively, because I would love to see some sort of military action against Iran. I know how complicated that is. Of course, there's zero chance of that happening, not just Hamas that needs to be destroyed. It's the possibility of this ever happening again. That's what a wake up call means. You don't just say, okay, we're going to retaliate. We're going to, you know, you killed 600 of ours. We'll kill 600 of yours. First of all, response needs to be disproportional, I think, to be just in this case. But it also needs to completely change the way the Middle East is. It needs to be so that this never happens again. It needs to be so that, as in the past, you would think twice before attacking Israel, which of course countries don't. How often do we see such an act of violence against people who are who cannot protect themselves? Forget the soldiers, no one's gonna care about them. Think about like the abduction of women, the abduction of children. You'd expect that there would be a moral outrage. What would be the like the Me Too crowd? reaction to that. This is an injustice which happens in front of your eyes. You see women being abused in front of our eyes. And there's like silence. There's because of your moral relativism, you cannot talk. You don't have the tools to attack. You don't have the tools to talk about what you see because you think that you don't even have a moral compass to say good. So people who talk about ceasefire, ceasefire means let Hamas continue doing this. Next time, let them try again. The funniest is not the ceasefire. The funniest is the compromise thing. So here's how I see compromise. Hamas says we need to throw the Jews to the sea. Israel says no, and they somehow need to meet in the middle. What's the middle? We need to throw half of the Jews in the sea? But you have people saying, you know, this is a response to oppression and so on, and which is leaving aside, of course, the bullshit of that argument in and of itself. Sometimes at war, you, uh, you have to kill people. That happens in a just war. In what war do you actually abuse women, parade their naked bodies, throw a body on the ground and have people cheering? You might kill elderly people and children, but you don't go into their homes and shoot them point blank in the head. This is not something that civilized people do, even though civilized people at war do kill people. Here's a guilty secret. No one wants these territories. If you told Jordan, hey, you're gonna get the West Bank, do you think Jordan's gonna take it? I think Israel should take over the Gaza Strip and this nearly 20 year experiment of giving it to terrorists, hoping they will become peaceful because we give it to them. Have you heard any other refugee case where some people are refugees for five, six decades? Ask yourselves, why are they refugees still? Because they're pawns and because some of these governments don't want to assimilate them, particularly the militants.